Hi, it's me again with Corel Draw Tips and Tricks, and this won't help too many people. Somebody sent me this logo, and they admittedly say it's not good. It's the only one they could find, trying to help out a veteran. And it's kind of hard to see, you know, what's the cobra. I mean, I'm sure, you know, the whole green thing's a cobra, and then this is, a, I guess, a cobra helicopter. Um, and they're going to engrave it on cups. So this is going to be a hard one. Let's put P, put it in the center of the page, which it already is. Let's do the outline first. It's 1.76, take an ellipse. And before I do that, I'm still using somebody's file that um, puts a fill in. So let's double click that and put no fill. Now when we draw the ellipse, it's still getting a fill, but that's fine. We'll go 1.76. Didn't have a ratio lock. Let's lock the ratio 1.76. Then let's nudge it over. It must not have been 1.76. Let's nudge that back. 1.76. Well, why is that not correct? It must be taken into account the background. Let's, uh, let's draw a box. Let's go ahead and fill it with yellow. Go to object, order, back a page. And that's what it's doing. It's, it's taking in the box. So we'll just draw an ellipse. Hit P, put it in the center of the page. Left click, no fill. Let's, let's right click red so we can see it. Then holding down the shift button, It'll help you grow from the center. We want it about right in the center of that line. Then we can take it and make that we want. If you go eight and it's too thick, and if you go forward too thin, you can always go type in a number here, and we're going to go seven. Whoop. Still a little bit too thick. Let's go six. So you could always type in whatever number you want. Then let's nudge that out of the way. And let's, I do not like tracing stuff anymore, and this will not trace, so we'll have to manually trace it. My favorite tool is the three-point curve. I'm not going to do this entire thing, but I'm going to show you how kind of easy with the three-point curve it is and how you can change a few things. We're going to go from there to there, and that's pretty much a straight line, but we're always going to give a little bit of a turn. So all I'm doing is before, I'll let go of the mouse and don't worry about that sharp edge right now. So go to some places where there's a curvature and finish the curvature. So all I'm doing is holding down the right mouse button. I connect on that node and that, that's probably not going to work right there, but we can always, let's back up. Let's go just do this little curve. And do not worry, and then I hit the right mouse button to, to stop the line. Then I get on that node. And it's a little bit hard to tell what's going on in the patch. Maybe if he has the patch on hand, he'll be able to see more of what's going on. And all I'm doing is taking, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave out that part right now, the tail of the snake. And we'll connect these lines. Now, I'm using some of these files the other day. Now, on these sharp points, you can always tweak them. And they act like cusp, because it's only gonna move the one. Sometimes you could actually take that note away and it worked. You know, we could probably take that note away and it worked. Uh, this won't work, but we can kind of adjust it. Now you can draw in the fangs, which I'm guessing those are fangs. Kind of hard to tell, but we'll still use the three-point curve line and just give them a little bit of a curve. We're just going from the top to the bottom. Don't worry about the tongue yet. The tongue is actually on top of the fangs, so we're coming out between the fangs. And this is where the three-point curve can really help you because you can really very quickly kind of do that. 
Now I didn't get on that line, so I'm gonna take my shape tool, make sure I'm in that line. I'm gonna take out that little jig there. And then we can use the virtual segment delete key to delete that, that we're gonna, see I'm not, that one line isn't to the top. So just take your shape tool and move that line. And then you can take the virtual segment delete key and delete that extra line. I'm not gonna uh, put in the tongue, but it'd be the same, well, I'm gonna do it real quick because it was actually quite easy. So I'm just gonna go ahead and draw the tongue real quick. I'm not gonna take a lot of time because you get the idea, but I'm gonna show you that you can use, make a straight line with the three point curve. Just click your mouse, just click your mouse and it'll set that node. Really easy. Uh, I, don't, I do not like tracing but when I do have to trace, I use the three-point curve line. And like I said, I'm not gonna take a lot of bit of time. Now, because the tongue is gonna to be all one color, or we're gonna make it a different color, this way, we fill it in with pure black and we might do gray on the Cobra. And I didn't take a lot of time on the, the uh, Cobra itself. What did I, what happened to my, my line around the outside of the Cobra, I guess, got cut off. So back up until you get that line back. And then I won't, I just won't redo the tongue. There we go. Now, let's take that line and let's nudge it down. I've actually got one over there. And then I did the same thing. I traced the, the Cobra markings, you know, this stuff right in here. And so I did, let's just nudge that back up and we're gonna use this Cobra marking to do our blend. And I'm gonna take my three point curve line again. And if you have no interest in doing stuff like this, you can stop watching. Um, I'm just basically doing this for one person, but you might get some hints out of it. And then I would take away maybe that node. Well, they're not connected, but we want to soften that edge. So now we can take our line and nudge it over here. And we'll actually combine it, go up to object and combine, and now it's all one piece. And now you could probably take your smooth tool 25 inches, pretty big smooth tool. Just kind of smooth out that line a little bit. Now we're gonna, I just made two shapes of the Cobra. So I made a little one and a bigger one. So take the little one, hit the plus key on your keyboard, move it over and make it just a little bit bigger. You don't have to do this, but I'm gonna pit T, put them to the top of the page, go to effects and blend. We're gonna blend 27 times and hit apply. Then we're gonna go down to new path, put them on the new path, blend along full path and hit apply. And I should have also back up here, blend along full path and rotate all object. Let me get rid of the blend now. And you see what happened. It, it blended that small one to that big one and you could change them all. Now we need to go to object, break the blend apart, and then you can get rid of that center line. I wouldn't get rid of it, I would just nudge it out of the way. And because we've nudged, let me uh, nudge the real picture out of the way. And because we've nudged, I'm gonna make the center black and take away the outline. And because we've nudged, we can nudge it right to our drawing. And that's not too bad. I could have uh, done a better job with the uh, blend tool. And because of the fact that the Cobra, and I could have maybe started out with a smaller unit at first. Let's just back up and do that real quick. It won't take just a second because we're, we're right here. Get back to our blend. 
let's make this one. And all I did to make these, I just made a rectangle. Let's make it a little bit smaller. And by doing that, we'll open the blend back up. We'll go ahead and do our 27 times. Blend along full path. Or blend along blend new path. Blend along full tip path and all. Oh, and um, rotate all objects. And then we can grab it all. You don't have to get rid of that line right now, but you might as well nudge it out of the way. Now we can right click a fill, left click no fill. And well, let me move our, let me zoom in here. Let me move our patch out of the way. And there's our Cobra. And there's his markings. Now, it's hard to tell in the picture. I added an eye, you know, uh, I think it needs an eye. Now, engraving this is going to be quite difficult. I would have tried this. I would try filling this in with, I got a link somewhere in my drawing. But as you can see, it's probably one of my joints right here. Well, it's it's right there. Let me take the shape tool and continue that line down. And we can actually break that line. Now we can fill this in with gray. And that's what I would engrave. I would try to make a because you're engraving on a cup. And then we can nudge all this. Let's take away the outline by right clicking. Nudge that back over our circle. Now to get the Cobra, which I've already done, I just type out the word Cobra. And, um, you know, try to find a, cl a font close to that. I'm not going to take the time for that. But we need to find out the text to path, so we're gonna draw an ellipse and, and put it up here and that's pretty close. So I'm gonna left click, right click in red and then I can nudge that over. Sorry if I'm zooming out too far. And then go put the Cobra, it needs to be a little bit smaller. The helicopter would be easy to draw, much like this snake but even easier because it's just straight lines and a couple of curved lines. Then go to text, fit text to path, put on your path. I would go in and grab it all, go to object and break the text apart, and then nudge your text over. And there is your pretty cool, pretty neat. Maybe need to move his eye down a little bit and, and, and play with these because once you go and you go to object and you break the curve apart where you can play with these individually. What I'm going to have to do is select it all. Go up to, I didn't break the blend apart, but I did, but I probably didn't ungroup it. Let's see what, oh, you know what? It's because it's a, I was hitting the fill. So before you fill that, you need to left click, right click, move that out of the way. And then you can grab these individually. We don't need that anymore. And then I would play around with these before and to grab those, sometimes it's hard to grab them. And we're grabbing the circle. So let's back up here and then dodge the circle out of the way. That way, because and you could have put it to the back of the page. Let's zoom in here and you could individually move these scales, you know, make them fit more in the snake. And because it's a smart feel, you're gonna have to uh, change some of that, but that's easily done. Let's just, let me go ahead and change a few. See, it's a, it was a smart fill, so you've got parts. So you would have wanted to do this before you smart filled it. 
and that's easily fixed. Let's uh, let's just fix it real quick. Three point curve, just go from you know there to there and make a new body of the snake. Actually, make it a little bit bigger. Take your virtual segment delete key and delete these lines. And because we're actually going to have no lines, so you don't actually have to delete these if you draw in hairline. But you, I think you get what I'm under, I'm trying to get by with. So you can move those around individually and then use your smart fill tool on gray to get, that's weird, that our spots. Tell you what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to nudge that out of the way, nudge that out of the way. I've got too many things on my page. I think that's happening because now this has become part of the smart field. So let's, let's just get rid of these. That was our other line. That's what was happening. It was creating, when I made the smart field, it was also putting a line. So now we can smart fill it, but we need our line. So I'm gonna go up to object and com combine this so it's all one piece and then nudge it down and over. That's what I like about the nudge key. And I was gonna do a little bit on the helicopter, but you get the idea. And then nudge your circle back or make it black for your engraving. Now, if, you're, if he's gonna do this on a rotary device, the gray should be less. And you could actually put an outline around the snake to maybe define it a little bit more. Maybe that's what I would do. You know, turn that to one, well, that's too far. Half a point. Anyway, the helicopter would be easy. Um, it's just basically lines, a little bit of curve there and just a little bit of half rotation there and cut the rotation off. I think it'll engrave pretty good. If you were doing it not on a rotary device, you could actually do the gray separately to give it a little bit more distinction. And then you'd want to put the other part of the tail in and you know really monitor it you know, once you get it going to see what it looks like in comparison to yours. Anyway, I hope that helped them a little bit. Thank you for watching.